<laughs> What's going on, crazy world? Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. I'm already laughing my ass off. I know this is going to be a wild one. It's going to be one of the most educated podcasts I've ever had. I'm thrilled to have a newfound friend who I know is going to be a returning guest for many, many times for many, many reasons. Mark Schmidt, my brother. Thank you very much for blessing the podcast. Welcome to it. I want to tell everybody really quick how I met you literally a, a few days ago. Um, big shout out to my cousin, Primo, uh, Ruben. I love you. Thank you for putting me down with, with the homeboy. Um, you know, I was talking to my cousin about different things. They, they, uh, just a, a bunch of life stuff. You know, he, he, he came by to, uh, he wanted to discuss a, a training schedule. And as we were talking training schedules, you know, so on and so forth, we said, okay, I'm going to start training my nieces, you know, his daughters, you know, big shout out to those girls. I love them to death, Angie and uh, Kat. Um, we got into life talk, what we all been through, so on and so forth, you know, this and that. And eventually, you know, we got into medicinal usage of different approaches for depression and anxiety and, you know, different people that he knew, you know, for for those of you listening, my cousin was in a, was a firefighter for a very long time. He retired as a fuck, I don't want to mess it up. I think he's lieutenant, something lieutenant, you know, don't, don't kill me cuz. Um, but you know, he's seen a lot of shit, been through a lot of shit himself, Crazy, crazy. you know, and, and eventually we just got into the different approaches that he's done and heard of it and is willing to, to do. And in that talk, he mentioned you as a friend. He said, Hey man, I have this friend, man. Um, so glad I met him. I forgot. He said he met you through his wife and so on and so forth. And that you were like this mushroom expert. And right away, my eyes blew up. Like, oh, and I'm not even a mushroom guy, but I love to learn about shit. And 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 I want to give a huge shout out to to Joe Rogan and, and the Joe Rogan Experience because because of his podcast, his platform, the world has now opened up a lot more into psychedelics and all the positive things that they can bring to so many people going through so many issues or just trying to become better versions of themselves. Absolutely. So I've been intrigued by this for quite a while, again, because of Joe Rogan and the guests that he's had on. We talked about Paul. Paul Stamets. Paul Stamets. St st say it again. Stamets. Stamets. Yeah. Paul Stamets, and I'm pretty much the godfather of he's Mushroom World. The goat. Um, yeah, you yeah. know, so, and I've been intrigued. So when he mentioned that you were this expert, I'm like, well, how, how, how is he this expert? What do you, how do you become an expert? Did he go to school? Did he, he goes, bro, he's got a wild story. He's an awesome dude. I said, do you think he'd be willing to do a podcast or can I at least meet him first? You know, I, I want to pick his brain. Like, how good is he at stuff? He says, let me talk to him because he's private. He's not out there like that. You know, he, he conducts his business very privately. And um, he put me down with you. And we, we communicated. And then we met about four or five days ago, I believe. And I'm fucking excited as hell about this podcast, dude. So let's get people a little bit up to the date as to how and when, because I love this story. When is it that you first journeyed into mushrooms? What is it that took you there? And take us through how it went from there. Crazy story. Um, let's see. It was 2002. I was in college. I played college football up in North Dakota. And a guy on my team, a guy on my football team, he was from Alaska. And before the games, he used to just, like, go to the side and eat this little baggie of yeah. shit. Yeah. I was like, what? Like, Doo doo in the bag or something. What is that, bro? But you can see him doing. I can see him doing it. I'd see, he'd do it before every single game. Now in North Dakota, it's freezing, like right. sub zero temperatures. Like especially the last couple games of the season, they're clearing the field off, like the snow off the field, right? With tractors, so because because that's December, January. It, of course, it, you're yeah, in it's, it. It's freezing, yeah. freezing. So uh, this guy would go out there. He's from Alaska. He would go out there with no shirt or anything under his pads just his pads and his jersey on top old school style no thermal nothing no under armor nothing like protecting you underneath like, this guy's crazy and he'd flip a switch he'd be a savage he's a middle linebacker just plowing people <laughs> so focused and he was all over he could see the plays happening before they happened like this guy was a beast and i was like man what is and i asked him one day i'm like what is that bro what are you doing and he said i'm from Ala obviously i knew he was in alaska he's like I, I come from a tribe and my tribe would, when we went, went into battle, we would take these, this is mushrooms, and we would we'd pop these mushrooms and we'd go into battle, like hundreds of years ago. Whenever right, that was right, thing, right. You know? And that's now part of his culture. Now, that's his culture. And um, apparently, like, I mean, he had a whole bunch of stories with all this stuff, and I was, I was just, wow, that's crazy. So he pretty much just admitted to you at that point that 
I, I get high on these mushrooms I'm, before I'm we go high. to battle on I the feel, field. I feel no pain. This heightens my senses. Like, it's a performance enhancing drug. Right. Essentially, like it flipped a switch and this guy was all over. Like his senses were heightened. He could see stuff that none of the rest of us saw. And I was just super intrigued about that. Like, because uh -huh. I'm always, I'm a curious person, obviously. So one day, not during a football game or practice. <laughs> okay. One day, just off to the side, I'm like, hey, man, like, let me take, let me see what this shit's all about, you know? Yeah. And so I, I've tried, it might have been like a gram or two, like super low dose, whatever. For my first time, I mean, that melted my brain. Yeah, that's that, that's not a, well, maybe <laughs> maybe to you now that's little, but yeah, one for, or two grams for your first time, yeah. that's. And it was 18. I was 18 years old. So this geez. was like, and this is the first time I did anything in this space, like, and when you did that first time, where was it at? Uh, it was in my dorm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just chilling and listening to music, man. I like I could hear the music. I could just feel. I all my senses were heightened. It was just it was insane, and it was just like one of those experiences that stuck in my mind for years. Never really did anything after that. Um, then, probably about eight or ten years ago, I was working in a in a in a job where I was uh, working in people's homes in like a field service career. Okay. And I went to this lady's house and uh, I knock on the door and the work orders for like this, this lady, I, I can't even remember what her real name was. And she opens the door and huge smile, like probably like a 70 year old lady. And she's like, mm. I'm so excited that you're at my house. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. I'm glad to be here to fix your shit or whatever I'm here for. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, she's like, my name is Groovy. And I'm like, Groovy, like, and I was like, this, this is your work order, right? Like for you, and I show her her information. That's me on paper, but my name's Groovy, <laughs> and I'm the coolest grandma you'll ever meet. And I was like, oh, this lady's like, she's dope. She's vibing. Like, yeah, like, yeah, that energy was there. Super energy, and I, I picked up, you know, immediately on that. And so I, I'm curious. I asked her, like, hey, what's, like, what's the vibe, baby? What is this? Like, why are you, what's, what's this all about? Why are you so extra? Where is it coming yes, from? Yes. What is this energy, man? Like, and she says, she starts telling me about, uh, she, she used to live in the Pacific Northwest and she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And wow. She, yeah. She, she, her doctor said you have three months to live essentially. Yeah. Stage four is almost no, no turning back. Yeah. You're, you're going to die. This terminal stage four. Um, I, I can't even remember what type of cancer she had, in, you know, as, as 10 years ago. And she says, the doctor said, you, at this point, don't even do chemo because it's going to deteriorate your quality of life. Mm. You might as well just live out, you know, make your final arrangements and have try to have as much fun as you can before you die. You know, fix everything that you want to fix in your life with any relationships you need to, whatever, you know, do your final, final stuff. And I was like, so when was that like how yeah you still <laughs> taking it like, it's like a month or two or two months i'm like wondering like how, how deep are you she's like oh that was like 10 years ago and i was like what and she's like yeah so what i did i didn't do what the doctor said he said to just go die and i went to chinatown in san francisco and found this expert chinese doctor that had been practicing chinese medicine for years and he brought he he you know sent an order for some mushrooms and herbs and a whole bunch of fresh stuff directly from China, uh, Chinese medicine. And she said it took about two weeks to get there when this arrived at her house, uh, at, the, at the, the doctor's office. And she took it to her house, had to like make a tea and make some, it was like kind of like a mush that she had to eat every single day, every single day, morning and midday and night for like a couple months. She said this tasted like complete ass. <laughs> her words were it is like satan's asshole <laughs> anyways and so i was like down like that and she's like and then i could feel my body coming back to life i felt like i was young again i felt like i had that energy back and i felt like my body was like overcoming this cancer and i was like dude that's crazy like this is crazy this is actually like you hear about this stuff, but yeah, every yeah. time you hear about this, I'm ultra skeptical about everything. Okay, like, good. What you should this? question everything. Question everything, yeah. for sure. So I was like, okay, so like what happened? And she's like, well, I went back to my doctor after four months of this treatment, 
And I said, I, and I showed up in my doctor's office. He was super surprised to, to see me that I was still alive and that I was in really good condition. And then I was like on the up and up. And she said, scan me, like do all the tests on me, see, you know, where I'm at with my cancer. And they scanned her. They did all the tests. They had, they had to run through the test twice because they couldn't actually believe that she was cancer, completely cancer free at that point. That's an anomaly. Obviously, this is just a crazy story. I'm obviously, so she tells you this. She tells me this right there like, on the spot. Wow, this is insane. And this was, the, and I was like, "What type of medicinal mushrooms? Like, what? What are you talking about? Like, what did he give you?" And he's like, "She didn't even know. I mean, she said there were mushrooms that this guy brought from China and some other herbs and stuff." It's like that's that's pretty crazy. So that peak man just like this pretty powerful. Like this is med like pharmaceutical or medicinal grade mushrooms that could actually have the potential in some cases to cure and did, 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 did she say that after she was cleared of it did she continue doing psychedelics or no, so during this whole process obviously when she was diagnosed she got super depressed um and living up in the, the north uh western united states there's uh, there's more of a culture of like foraging for mushrooms there's a lot more um this is kind of like a mushroom culture up in that area in certain pockets. And she somehow got connected with somebody with the psychedelics and she did a, a psychedelic trip with magic mushrooms and her fear for death went away, which probably helped her overcome the cancer, honestly, because your mind controls your body, your mind, uh, your, um, you have, uh, your systems in your body that that control basically how your body regulates itself um you're it's kind of it's, it's kind of like if i can throw this as a small comparison kind of like the whole placebo effect thing if i put this placebo pill in you but your mind thinks it's taking in a real medicine that's going to help you and now your mind starts saying hey we're about to fix whatever it is that this placebo is supposed to fix without them knowing it and then they fix it yep that's well, definitely definitely part of it okay um, now in her case so there there's a there's a system called the, symp the sympathetic nervous system and that fights with what's called the parasympathetic nervous system so the um on one side that is your flight or, f or fight response it's like you are going to a mode of, of stress which we have um, evolutionarily speaking needed for survival for like we need that mm -hmm. like when you got to get some shit done your body stop it, it, it turns tur flips a switch and goes into this fight or flight uh, fight or flight response right now the other um other side of that is your parasympathetic nervous system uh response or um it's also known as the feed and breed um system so it makes you like when when you eat and you're like relaxed right after you eat that's that serotonin that's like the dopamine hits that's that relaxation that you're in that zen mode and your heart rate variability will increase your your um your body will relax basically and so what happens is some people will actually get stuck their body will get stuck in the sympathetic um, mode so it's always in, in a hyper state and that will affect um, circulation to your organs and it's actually specifically they've found that a lot of the organs that your body doesn't send blood to because they're less essential organs that's where cancer develops like colon cancer your body when you're in this state of stress at all times your body will send less blood to your your stomach your internal organs your your intestines and it's basically a response to send it to the muscle tissue because you got to like get out of the stressful situation so this usage of the shrooms that she found with her new connection made her feel at peace with dying. Yeah. Okay, if I'm going to yeah. die, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to overthink and I'm not going to stress so it. Relax and let the shrooms happen. helped her do that. Mm -hmm. And we both think that essentially had to be a big part of, because of what you're telling me right now, which physiologically happens, that had to help. Absolutely. That had to help because she was no longer stressed and stress has all those after effects that you just mentioned. Definitely. Definitely so, a factor. So that was right. And then potential other factors with the, the, you know, medicinal mushrooms and whatever herbs that she ingested, whatever else she ingested had to have had a synergistic effect, but the brain is so powerful and it's control over your body. Is so powerful. Um, Buddhist uh, monks have found ways through breathing techniques to, to invoke either the stress or the um, relaxation in those two systems of the body. 
and they'll through meditation and through breathing uh, specifically, like even like there's a breathing technique called Tumo, which um, it's made so that they could survive in like the winter in Tibet without anything but just what they're wearing. They, they can heat up their body. Wow. Because it turns a switch into the, into the uh, sympathetic nervous system, which makes them have all the energy and their body temperature actually heats up. This is factual information. You can Google that. And Harvard's done studies and they've discovered that you can do, you can put your body into that state through breathing techniques. The problem that happens is when your body stays in that state for too long and it doesn't switch back into the parasynth- uh, parasynthetic uh, mode, which is the relaxation mode, because you have to have a balance uh, or else you're not going to have circulation. You're not going to have correct body function. So this lady spilled all these beans to you in that, in that one visit. So she told me about the, her cancer experience and obviously the follow up. Yeah. Thinking about what, like this is the explanation of probably what happened just thinking scientifically like Mm -hmm. it's probably what happened but she told me about her the the cancer experience and her mushroom experience and then she says to me and now what i do is i do um every single uh, every couple days i she pulls out this jar of honey that she had in her house and i was like what you got there? (laughs) what you got there (laughs) it was all blue and black inside and i'm like what is that it's like that's honey well it's enhanced honey and it uh this is like my little special sauce and she takes a little spoon and ate it and she's like this is like a kind of like a microdose of mushrooms so i have dried up mushrooms inside here and just mixed up and whenever i'm gonna have my grandkids over i just mix this up i take one scoop out and i have the best day with my grandkids it makes me like super grandma i get on the floor and i play with them i have so much fun it flips the switch and i'm like a different person i can get on their level and my grandkids love me I was like, wow, this is so interesting. Like, you're not using what we see as a drug right, to right. get high. You are using this specifically yeah, yeah, yeah. to be a better person, yeah. to develop a better relationship with somebody that's very important to you right. in your life. And that really piqued my interest. And I'm like, okay, what other practical applications can we use this for? Because this seems like almost too good to be true. So I start investigating, obviously. I spent a few years just researching and then I kind of went out of it and got back into it. And then I was like, you know what? Um, these are actually really easy to like grow on your own. All right. Let's uh, take a look at that. Try to batch. And I started experimenting myself, obviously low dose and kind of went through um, my own experience with different dosages and, now we we spoke about this when we did lunch, and, and I asked you, and especially since um, again I just watched these uh, these uh, movies and, and docu series, and a person that you told me to look up, and, and I'm even more informed now, and I'm looking at these people, especially um, Sasha uh, Alexander Sasha Sultan S U L Shogun S S H U L G I N Shogun. Uh, you guys can look him up, Alexander Sasha Shogun. Um, you know, he would jot down every little detail yep. of how he felt when he could, unless it was too intense. And, and, you know, I thought about that and I asked you, I said, well, were you doing the same? Did you, did you methodically approach this where you knew you were going to be your own guinea pig and you knew you were, you wanted to pay attention to how you felt, mm-hmm. what you went through, how many, how high was the dosage? What was that day like? Were you clear headed that day? Were you upset? And this became a process. Absolutely. So this, uh, obviously, um, years prior to this, I had experimented with other psychedelics, um, you know, with non-classic psychedelic uh, ketamine, which is a, it's a disassociative psychedelic. I used to live in South America for a while and you can just go to like any, um, agro supply store and it's a, it's a horse tranquilizer, Mm -hmm. animal tranquilizer. It's actually the first tranquilizer or the, um, anesthetic that they give you when you go under anesthesia in most people they'll, they'll give you ketamine with another uh anesthetic and um this is back my dad got uh he got diagnosed with cancer around 2007 2008 and that was that really put me into like a into depression basically like i got very very depressed because i was gonna i felt like i was gonna lose my father i you know kind of knew it was inevitable and at that point um, I was living in South America at the time and, uh, I was, I started using ketamine 
uh, injecting myself with ketamine, which that's its own. We could have a podcast about ketamine one of these days. Ooh, it's wow. Be fun, yeah. But that kind of built up um, uh, about two and a half years of experience on a daily basis using um, a psychedelic. And it helped me overcome the depression that I was going through at the time. And then later on, uh, um, uh, was obviously I, I started experimenting with other herbs, other things, you know, um, Kratom. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, Kava. Uh, there's another one called Kana, which is like a relaxation. It's, it's a, a African herb that they chew on all day. Uh, the, the, the translation is actually like, I think it, it directly translates as like something to chew on all day. K-A-N-N-A. Uh, people can check that out. That's another fun one. It's completely legal. So is um, Kratom and, and Kava. Um, so I've always experimented with herbs, with, with different things, uh, substances to alter my conscience, but also to mostly to see if I can improve myself in any way. It's not about using, um, using. No, you know, it wasn't that, es it wasn't an escape. It, you weren't yeah, just trying to escape reality. And not trying to just get, not just get high. high stuff. Right. Like how can I improve myself and, and going back to how. And, um, and how were you trying to. Like, what was it that you were doing in order to see if you were improving? Like, were, were you doing a memory test? Were you doing some numerical thing? Were you, were, you just, were you just paying more attention to your moods, maybe, or how you dealt with a reoccurring uh, traumatic, you know, memory of some yeah. sort? Like, what was it that you were paying attention to to see what your incremental on um, becoming better? Yeah, so obviously when I was single, um, I would take my feedback for myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's uh objective at best uh when you have somebody that you're dating or you're, you're married to uh that um they're very honest and they'll tell you shit how it is mm -hmm. so um if you're not you know if you're acting a certain way they can help you see that sometimes that right. you can't see and uh see those blind spots i, I guess you'd say and a lot of it, like, performance is based, like, on a lot of factors and whatever your personal goals are. Like, let's say you have fitness goals, you have financial goals, you have um, just being at peace with yourself, uh, spiritual goals or whatever your goals are, you need to um, be able to measure your progress on those goals. Right. And so if something can help you uh, enhance your performance, um, then it's worthwhile exploring. And I've always been curious. I've been an experimenter about, you know, whatever I can, whatever I can try and, and kind of see if it can improve me or, or take me to a better place. So I imagine, because I was my own, <laughs> I was my own guinea pig with brownies. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, Mark, man, and, and I know a couple of my friends are watching and they are immediately in tears thinking about, the, multi the multiple horrible incidents that we had because <laughs> took the, too much. <laughs> the, the brownie was just overdosed. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> Period. I, the brownie was so overdosed, and I'm just taking chances. Like I literally, I'm just grabbing a big old scoop of this grounded up fucking marijuana. I'm like, that looks like it's too little. I'm comparing it to coffee. <laughs> I'm comparing it to coffee. I'm like, bro, a good scoop of coffee. That that nah nah. I'm gonna put two big scoops of this, and then. <laughs> Another thing that I did wrong was I didn't mix up the batch well enough. Like, you have to Homogenize. stir the fuck out of that because if not, one brownie, one piece, one corner of your of your plate of brownies is going to be Incredible Hulk loaded versus another one's going to be like, oh, I didn't get that high, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. yeah so when I tell you I sent a, a, a several friends of mine, I sent a whole poker table one time into fucking La La Land <laughs> where we just had to stop playing poker. <laughs> we, who, no one knew who made what money. It was bananas, 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 bananas. So I know it is to be your own guinea pig, but I had good intentions. I didn't want people to be that high. Hence, I kept doing it to myself. You must have gone through some oh, type of roller coaster yeah. to, scales, to find all this. Scales and measurements to the most minute level. Um, I'm a very big um, proponent. Of, uh, I'm, I, I, think that lowest dose possible is always your best okay you know, if you can the lowest dose that's going to give you the highest amount of performance is always the best and i would measure what i was going to do i'd notate and then i'd notate the experience and what i felt on a scale of one to ten was my performance increase if any 
And so, um, and then different, different situations, like how, 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 how do you feel when you lift weights on X uh. at this dosage? How do you feel running a mile on the treadmill at the speed on this? Like, how is that affecting you? So, but you only change one factor, one variable, because you want to keep every all factors equal except one single variable, which is to better understand what's making dosage. the difference. Exactly, you have to know that that specifically made the change. It wasn't how good I slept last night. It wasn't what time I went to sleep. It wasn't what I ate today. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So here you are, you're starting to figure out your own your own mixes, right? Now, this is where, okay, so we had this talk, and you blew my mind when we started talking about this, and, and when you came here today, you, you brought me some goodies that I, I cannot fucking wait to try, and you literally brought me like four different versions, right? And we spoke about this over lunch. So you actually do mixes now. You don't just do mushrooms, and, and there's so much to talk about. I don't want to lose the crowd because it's so important what you're doing for people is what you're doing, right? But... As we now we get into the, you know these people these patients of yours that you're helping, you start doing different mixes on your own. You're now it's not just mushroom, and, and I'm, I don't want to go off the wall with it, but you're actually mixing some some light dosages of Adderall, MDMA. Uh, I don't know if marijuana um, and and different things that I might not know of. Take us a little bit through that. What made you want to start doing that? Is it because you're seeing people like Sasha and he's influencing you? Because, again, I can't wait to talk about him. This man has made over, I don't know how many thousands of different formula of drugs. He invented MDMA or brought it he, back. Yeah, he brought it back. He yeah. brought it back. And, and he didn't even mean for it to blow up and do all that. That was not his intention. That was... They fucking stole, they sold it to the biker gang, to mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Hells Angels, mm -hmm. and Hells Angels started selling them DMA. It wasn't even supposed to be that. Yeah. That's how it blew up the way. What a fucking story. Crazy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then they asked Sasha how many times did he dose the MDMA in order to learn more and more about it. He said he only did it like a couple of times because that's not his thing. He's trying to move on. Like you say, now he wants to change the dose and see what that's What's different, yep. and he doesn't want his memory to be tainted. He's just like, okay, that was that, on to the next. Yep. So you're kind of doing the same shit on, in your own way. You know, Talk us through that, bro. What, what brought that about? Oh, man, that's just been obviously um, testing and performance and improvements, and did that help or did that – was I more productive? Um, becoming more creative and having your mind more open – uh, it, it's important, especially if, if somebody's in any, actually in any career, like you could be the director of a software company mm -hmm. and you could have a problem that's stumping you that you just can't <clears throat> overcome and you just can't think of an idea. And if, if you can get an idea through an altered state of consciousness, like that you wouldn't have ever come up with unless you were tripping balls. Right. Um, that that's a win. Right. So that's why people in Silicon Valley, you know, the software developers and these, you know, everything that's coming out of there, these guys are micro dosing, they're macro dosing, they're doing, they're testing stuff, they're testing on themselves and they're spreading it around the office like, hey, I was super productive because I stacked this with this, I, I tried this, I'm on this right now. So it's just been kind of trial and error going through um, uh, what works and obviously for safety purposes, never ever 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 mix drugs i just want to be clear like safety is an absolute first anybody that has real mental health issues like you know bipolar disorder and schizophrenia this is not like this is this is not recommended do not right don't even get in like see you know talk talk to a professional i talk to you know get see if you can get in a trial right. with john hopkins they, they don't even take Honestly, they don't like most of these trials won't even take you if you are diagnosed with certain mental disorders like, you know, 
doable Cause, scenario. Because this shit can take you to somewhere you, you won't return. Yeah, it, it can. Because you're already dealing with some real. You're dealing with some stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, safety is so important. Um, mixing drugs is not a good idea, but um, at micro dose levels, they can give you an enhancement, especially if there's no inter interactions between those. Um, between the you know on a pharmacology level right so um with that being said i mean yeah we could talk about that on a whole another episode there's just quick so quick quick there. question you are you like is this you know we were talking about sasha and the videos and, and the documentaries that we've seen you and i do you have like is it are you looking like his lab because this guy had <laughs> beakers he no, had no, beakers no. that i've yeah. never seen in my life all kind of different glassware hanging and and suspended and standing and connected like a fucking a root a tree limb or what is it, it was crazy it was amazing yeah. <laughs> you don't have all that going on no, no, no anywhere no. no 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 not even like i don't even source any of this stuff myself but or, back like, in but back in the days I when you first it. tried it yeah i you, mean you grow i I grew in my house at the okay. beginning because that was, it was, you know, I was experimentation. So, right, right. You know, and then after that, I'm like, I, you know, it for legality purposes, of course. you know, I can't be doing this. Right, and right. So that's obviously not an option at this point. So w once you were doing it enough to yourself, you got curious and you told me that you asked your wife if she would be down to yeah, try well, something I, with her. You, you had a bad day yesterday. Okay, try this and see if you're going to have a, a little bit better day today. Very, very low dose. And when, you know, when you're working with micro dosing, um, and we'll get this a little bit later, we'll talk about micro dosing and macro dosing uh, and the different, we could just start right now. Yeah, tell, yeah tell us right now, so, inform us. What, are, what is the difference? Micro dosing is essentially where you are taking what is a sub perceptual dose. You barely want to know, realize that you have anything, that you've even taken anything. It's almost, it, it could almost be a placebo effect. Okay. But you, you could feel a little bit more than what you think a perceived um, placebo effect would be. Is this going out or is it my No, no, no. Headphones? Okay. No, you're good. Yeah, I keep like getting a little. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's yeah. totally good. So with that being said, uh, microdosing is a very powerful tool uh, as long as you don't build up a tolerance through overuse. Okay. And uh, it's like anything. Like if, you, if you're prescribed Adderall, and you don't have anything to do on Sunday, you don't have to take that Adderall that day. Right. Like, take that shit when you're going to do something. Yeah, you, you need to be focused. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. You got, if you got, you know, work to do or homework, or you got, like, some project you're working on, that's when you get Adderall up in the morning. And use that for that specific purpose. And this is with anything. Like, like I'm not a, I'm not, drugs for recreation is not my, it, like, I don't, it's got its place. Right. It's just not me. Okay. And I'm not hating on anybody that does it because right. do your, you do you. Like, I don't judge anybody. Do what you want to do with your, with yourself. With that being said, um, there's so much more to it that you can get out of it if you use these uh, with, with intention and with, like, surgical precision. Um, so my micro ends up being about how much and and that does it have to vary per person it based upon the tolerance gonna, yeah yeah it depends on what you're micro dosing like if you're gonna micro dose uh mushrooms it could be anywhere from a well, depending on the strain because it's mushrooms there's so many different strains of mushrooms uh you have the cubensius mushroom um which even in that there's you know kind of beginner mushrooms all the way up to stronger cubensis like uh like the penis envy and um there's there's one that's called the ti tidal wave strain and it, it's pretty strong it's very strong for the cubensis strain of mushrooms and then you have you know uh the pan cyans and then even stronger than that you have like your azures so when you say this because i know some people are going to think you you just said alien words right now okay but that's fine it sounded like you named about four or five different strands of mushrooms and you're saying that each one of them has a different strength or potency yes correct me if i'm wrong that's correct when you speak about this potency what is how could you kind of paint the picture for us in comparison like let's let's try to paint a picture for the for the people listening or the viewers well, let's stay on one gram. Let's just say one gram, just yeah, to make a nice even number. If it was one gram of the Cubensis, the 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 the, the lightest one, okay, so let, up let, up yeah. until one gram of each, how how big of a difference would it have 
okay, if everything was done correctly, I took my few days off. I did the one gram of whatever, the weakest one. I'm going to feel yeah, X. One How big is the difference yeah. on the next one level up and the next level up? What is that? Yeah, so uh, one gram of like the most basic uh, Cubensi strain, like let's, oh, even before that, you have truffles. So you have magic truffles. That's like, let's say that's like, you, you take a gram of magic truffles and that's like taking two two grams of magic truffles would be equal to like a basic Cubensi strain. But then at the far spectrum of that, like tidal wave or penis envy, that's like an additional gram. And then because it's higher potency, they have higher. So the so same so the same between. amount of one gram is going to feel like you took two grams. Because, yeah, exactly. Of, of, the, of, of the other of one. Of the other one. Because right. uh, they have active, uh, the active component of psilocybin, which your body um, converts to psilocin, the acid in your body and your stomach will uh, break it down to psilocin, which is the psychoactive component of it. And uh, the psilocin and psilocybin content in that is the percentage is higher. And then you get to like your pan cyans, which would be like eating like four truffles or up to five mm. or six truffles. And then you have the azures, which are so insanely strong and they can only actually, you can't really cultivate those in uh, a controlled environment. You, you have to actually forge for those in the Pacific wow. Northwest. Really? Like, yeah. Paul Stamets is uh, forges for those. Um, those ones at high doses actually make you paralyzed for a few hours. Okay, so so do you do macro is how much more than micro? So micro dosing is such a small dose that you barely want to feel right. Like you can function completely on that. Like okay. you just feel enhanced right you feel like today is a damn good day yeah you don't feel like, a high no you're you not distorted slight high. slight high slight high and just a little bit more but like a runner's high like a focus yeah, like you know focus, very like i feel super good today okay i have a lot of creativity i i my my um senses are a little heightened okay slightly heightened and then okay. macro would be a smidge more oh macro is a lot more oh so it's a lot more we're talking like 10 times more so where you would do damn like, i thought macro was only yeah. like a little bit more i didn't realize that okay yeah, so like so you're hallucinating now yeah you're tripping balls okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, macro dose is like oh. therapeutic dose this is like um it, you're suffering from a traumatic event in your life which almost everybody suffers from trauma uh you have depression you have anxiety or you know you were di you were diagnosed with terminal cancer and you're fearing like death right now this is hi this is a highly um uh, effective medicine for those treatments specifically now there's other spaces that this can help i mean i read a news article about six months ago from uh, this quadriplegic that took my that took a macro dose of mushrooms and now he's walking stop no bro i can send you the article right holy now. shit I can send you the article right now okay so we'll post, on, we'll post on, that in the show notes so post, on that I'll, note I'll, yeah I, I want so to so on notes. on that note you started doing this with your wife. You, you no, I started doing this myself. Well, no, yeah, I know yeah, first yeah. you were first, but then eventually yeah, your wife okay. allowed you to help her. No, no, for, she hasn't. She grew up with anxiety. Okay. So I said, "You would you like to see, experiment, and see if through a, one of these treatments you could overcome your anxiety?" Now, change has to come from within. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem with a lot of people that are like trying to do these trips or the, you know, want to do these trips is it, they don't do it with the intent of, of changing. They don't do it with like my, the reason I want to, um, like I have a deep need to improve in my life or I know I have depression and I, I've tried everything and nothing works. And this is what I'm going to try. Like, this is like, I'm at the end of my options here. Right. Those are the people that you're going to have the most results with. They're going to have the most results in, from doing this. Because uh, they want it bad enough. They They're really it. tuned in to like, I have to get this. this I have has to get to something. Something right. has to work. Right. And so, it, it's for, for example, I, I did a I did a session with this girl. And, the, you know, I before I do these sessions, I, I sit down with people and I, I talk to them about what's our reasoning? Like, why are, you, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this? You know, what what's your reasoning? Tell me what, you, what you're trying to do here. That's my question. Like, w explain to me why you're going to do this and what you're trying to accomplish. And if they don't have a good reason, oh, like she says to me, my boyfriend told me that I should do this because he thinks that I'm a little too snappy. 
we're not yeah, this, bro. Not, we're right. not going to do this. I'm sorry. Right. Because and, you, and you've turned you. you've turned potential turn clients down all the time. All the time. This nice. is not for you, bro. Right. Like that is not the reason you 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 have to be the reason to change. If you can't see that you need to change your life, this isn't going to do nothing. You're going to trip balls and you're going to have a fun ass experience. Like you're going to love this every moment of this. You have a great experience, but this is not going to equal lasting change in your life. Mm. This is not going to overcome anxiety, depression, trauma. This isn't going to overcome the fact that you suck in relationships because you had a, you know, a bad relationship and that caused trauma. And now you don't want to open up your heart anymore. Okay. This is, this is the complete opposite. You're doing this forced. So absolutely. You know, I've had people that have come to me and say, my, my wife needs to do this. Everybody's super quick to point the finger. Like, I, it's, you know, who needs to do this, this person. So as a, so we, we, we've brought ourselves up to this point now. It's not like the cat's out the bag. We were going to mention it, but so here you are, you're now doing therapeutic sessions. If, if I can call it that. Yeah. So I'm start with, with people yeah, who have reached out to you. Members. I started with family members. Okay. You know? Start with, you know, immediate family. You start with La Suegra, you know, she, man, she was, she, my mother-in-law, bro. She was like, she's a tough cookie. She did, she was like hard to get along with. I'm talking like, I don't want to say this. You know, she's probably going to watch this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I got to, you, you were rough. <laughs> <laughs> sure, she knows it. <laughs> she knows, she knows. And now I... I've always loved you, but I love who you've become because of this. She um, she saw how much I have changed. She saw how much my spouse had changed. She saw how much uh, all these experiences that I've had, I had with other people. I was, I was having so many like people just have these breakthroughs. Mm. You know, I work a lot with first responders. I work a lot with people with a lot of trauma, um, professionals in every single sector every single sector of men and women you know i work with a whole bunch of people in pretty much every sector but a lot of first responders with a lot of, of trauma because that's unfortunately their job what kind of things are these people disclosing to you in the beginning to kind of like not convince you but you know so that they don't sound like the girl whose boyfriend sent her to you are they being pretty much upfront right away i mean because this is kind of like their first session with a therapist, you know? Um, some people have gone to a therapist and it has got them to, you know, in fact, I was working with a, with a therapist uh, at, that was outside the country and he would refer patients here locally to work with me. Wow. Yeah. That's he's, awesome. Yeah, because he, he's, you know, he, he works out, of, uh, he's from South America, or he's from South America, works from Mexico, does virtual therapy and then we worked. You, you, you told patients. me you've even worked with couples. Oh, tons, tons, tons of couples. Of couples. Yep. So these couples, I'm just, I'm just freestyling this. Somehow, shape, or form, they, they, they hear about you through a, a source person. Obviously, you know this isn't fucking looking the phone book yeah, and call Mark. Sure. Um, eventually, you guys communicate. You meet up. You have this first powwow, this first sit down about like you know, hey, why do you guys want to do this? What, yeah, what's well, going what's on? Reasoning, yeah. And they kind of tell you somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, our relationship is fucked up. We're on our last straw. We don't know what to do. We've gone to couples therapy, so on and so forth. And somebody suggested that uh, doing some type of a, a psychedelic trip could help because X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Walk us through that. Like, like yeah. you're not calling any names yeah, out, yeah. but well, how, how does it help these people? Are they that? high that they open up are they are they that high that that they experience something they never experienced with each other the vulnerability and how do you come up with this perfect dosage for maria who's five to 100 and you know 35 pounds and you know uh, lewis who's six foot 200 pounds how do you say okay i'm gonna give you this i'm gonna give you that that should be the perfect you know so that you open up and you stop bitching and you but but bop and we should fix this like how does that happen yeah so with couples generally i'll start with one of the two i'll, I'll sit down with one of the couple and then i'll sit down with the other one and they'll do separate uh sessions like once we we'll, we'll sit down together and then we'll go through issues we'll talk about what they've already tried we've talked about what their goals are and then I really get into what do you want to accomplish out of this? What do you what do you love about your life? What do you hate about your life? And if you're if if you were to get rid of everything that you hate out of your life, what would a perfect life look like for you? What's a perfect relationship look like for you? And I make them write that stuff down before their trip because that's going to be our focus. We're going to get rid of the negative. We're going to start focusing on the positive. 
and I'll sit down. I'll usually do like a like a uh, one day with one of the two of the spouse, and then I'll do the other day with the other one. And then we'll do a follow-up maybe a couple weeks later where they're both doing a, a slower dose and they do that together if that's necessary but most of the time that's not even necessary really it, it, most of the time they just need time, to have they, they just already, need to do a single already, one with you they've and, already and, fixed it yeah and what it does uh what you know generally you'll hear through these sessions is people will say it dissolved my ego it made me realize like a lot of introspective thought that made me realize I, I need to improve. I can get better. I can, I don't have to put up this wall. I don't have to be an asshole to this person. I don't have to be like I am because that's how I grew up. It really gets down and I really work to get to the root causes of trauma in people's lives. And that comes in so many different forms. I had a client that she, um, her mom she got pregnant with her and she didn't want to be pregnant. She was so stressed during the pregnancy and that stress went to her baby oh, man. during her trip. She went back to when she was in her mother's womb during her trip <clears throat> and she relived that experience wow. in her mom and she felt the trauma as a baby that has been with her her whole life and has shaped her life and she hasn't gotten, she never knew that that was part of this and then she Felt like she was in her mom's body, living her mom's life, and felt all the feelings of the trauma and how bad her mom felt. And her mom was going to have an abortion. She decided not to because, like, a family member said, I'll take the baby if you have the baby. And she ended up just keeping her daughter, obviously. But all that was trauma that was passed down as an inheritance, unfortunately, to her daughter. And she's been living with this whole, her whole life. That Just having that and being able to realize, like, I know where this came from and I forgive my mom because in the moment she made the decision that she made and that was the best decision she could have made at that time in her life. And I'm grateful that she didn't abort me. And she had this majestic journey during a psychedelic yes. session with you. Mm -hmm. You're 30 minutes in, maybe 45 or walk me through it. When, when does that intensity, you know, I've done mushrooms a couple of times uh, only one time did I go, you know, I did two grams and it, it was nice. It was a great feeling. Like I told you, I wish I would have done it with somebody. I did it with myself and I wasn't around nature or like a body of water, which I would have loved to experience. But anyhow, you know, it was, it was good, you know, a uh, test run. I know when it started kicking in, I know when it kicked into like, okay, I'm, I'm there, there. This, this is going to be probably the highest point that I'm at. What can I do with this? That was me alone on two grams. This is, a, a, you know, a, a young lady who's experiencing some type of trauma, depression. She can't figure it out. She comes to you. You, you, you suggest a dosage. However, you figure that out. That To me, that shit is still wild. What, what are you going to suggest? Yeah. When is it that, and I'm sure every story is different, but just speaking about this, this young lady, up, up until when? How long did it take where the intensity of, of the high was there where either she went down that rabbit hole of, of thinking about her mom and seeing herself in the wound and all that other stuff. Or if you don't know that, how much longer was it after she started like two, three, four, five hours later until she was able to calmly and descriptively tell you, wow, Mark, this is what happened. How long was it until she was able to say that, to explain right. that? So every trip, every single person is completely different. Completely. Yeah, completely. And everybody's experience is so different. Um, generally generally speaking this is what a trip looks like for somebody that's never done this before so i always get these same questions am i going to shit myself am i going to <laughs> that's a legit question like if you've never done anything people say that like all the time like am i gonna like take my clothes off and start running out they have street? reasons though it's they hilarious but it makes sense this, yeah, that's so yeah. funny dude super hilarious and so i resolve all these questions obviously in our first sit down uh -huh. Any question you have, I can I can answer pretty damn accurately. Right. If I've done this with almost a thousand people at this point. Then, so this is what a general what it generally looks like. Um, we have the sit down. We go through your goals. We go through what this is going to look like for you. Um, on the day we, you know, I show up early. We start early. You want to be fresh. You you want to have slept very well that night. I usually will do this at people's houses. Because the, there's very, you'll see this in all the you know trials and all the tests and all the literature is always going to tell you that very important to be in a good mindset, mm -hmm. set and setting, which so tends to be home. Ten, your home is your most, it's your sanctuary. Exactly. 
So um, your mindset has to be in a good place. You can't have just broken up with your girlfriend the day before or your cat just died or some shit that's traumatic just happened. Like you lost your job on Friday. We're not going to do that trip on Saturday, bro. Right. Like you can't do that because you're in a bad mental space. Right, right, moment. right. So you have to be in a good mindset and you have to be focused on what we talked about, what, you're gonna, what your goals are to improve and what your goal is to, what, what are you getting rid of in your life? What do we want to get rid of and what are we going to replace that with? Okay. And so we'll get, uh, we'll use a start early in the morning. Uh, I'll have, I'll have the dosage in two separate, um, uh, options. It's, well, it's, they're going to take both of these, but you, one is in a powder form where they're going to drink in like a smoothie or something. And then the other is ha the other half of the dose is in capsules, which they take about an hour to open up in your stomach. And so what happens is doing it this way, um, I get it. I know what you're going to yeah, say. Usually when you take um, a high dose, you immediately peak. And sometimes <clears throat> people get anxiety at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's like the ego dissolution or you get anxiety and you feel like I'm like, I'm going to die right now. Obviously that's all in your head because this is like the safest thing you can put in your body. Um, so at that point, so what I do is I give them half the dose. So that's an immediately going to start having an effect. Some people feel it within about eight minutes. Some people it takes about a half hour. 45 minutes depends on your metabolism depends on your liver depends on if you've i, I always do this on an empty stomach too because uh, the acid it has to break down this this the psilocybin to psilocin and it's very important that you haven't eaten four hours before you know within so it doesn't get hours. lost in the food metabolism exactly you okay. have to have the stomach acid to start okay. breaking this down unless you are drinking this in a like a lemon tea which break you know that you let it sit, sit the there. tea breaks it down on its own yeah, better the oh. lemon tech method that people you'll see online um, so half the dose they'll ingest and then they'll take those capsules. Um, and then at, uh, about, so they're going to start feeling like a pretty moderate, really good euphoric feeling, but not an anxiety level feeling. And then right when they start leveling off with that, so they're used to it. The second one, that sneaks second one in comes in Excellent. and it, it's, it really sneaks in and they feel like, okay, I just went deeper into the rabbit hole. Like I just popped that matrix pill and I'm freaking just woke up out of the matrix. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So, so my question is, part of it, okay, like, you know, like I, I envision, you know, you, you have to do some type of talking. Yeah. You have to give them some type of comfort. I, I'm trying to envision some type of therapist who somebody's spilling their beans. Mm -hmm. You know, I would imagine if any of that occurs, it starts occurring. There's a little bit, there's segments to it in the beginning and then and maybe it goes a little bit extra. But you're you're talking to them, right? Like here and there, are they like, well, let's say you're having the husband in their relationship, right? Is the husband that high hits him so nice that he's talking to you like, Mark, this fucking woman, you know women, you know this and that, or, and you're just vibing with him, but you're trying to, you know, not say, you know, too much. You just yeah. got to let him ride that wave, and it's, yeah, a, so it's a difficult balance, I imagine, sometimes. Definitely, uh, definitely. So, when I, obviously, when I'm doing this, I'm at, at, at somebody's house. We will either have them, you know, laying, you know, if their house, if there's nobody in their house, or if there's, you know, uh, we'll be, you know, on a couch, and I'll be sitting you know, on a chair next to them, or if they're, you know, some people want to go lay down on their bed, laying down is generally the best. Uh, also, um, it's best to have uh, eye covering. So like little, you know, sleep masks and stuff. Uh, and that really comes down to the experience is a lot better if you have your eyes closed. Yes, I imagine so. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's lots of people that you'll, you'll talk to and they say, yeah, I did mushroom ones. And I, used, I was like looking at myself in the mirror and my face was melting. Yeah, because there is a ser serotonin receptor sites. This it's a, a um, the two A receptor serotonin two A receptor sites. This is like technical mumbo jumbo. Uh, there's a lot of those in your eye. They're all over your brain. A lot of them in your in your frontal cor uh, cortex, uh, but a lot of them in your actual eye. That, and so, what happens is that's the receptor site that the psilocin locks into. And that's why you see halluc like hallucinations. You see, um, you know, 
like kaleidoscope patterns or neon lights mm. or all that stuff is because those receptor sites are actually in your eyes. And if you have your eyes closed, you're going to, you're going to just see, you know, like kaleidoscope and geometric patterns. It's, it's dope. It's a dope show to check out while you're in that state. How do you choose these higher dosages? You, you told me, I, I literally thought you were fucking smoking crack. You told me some amounts that were mind blowing. And, and I'm going to give a little shout out to my, my home girl, close friend of mine. She was a guest one time, Romy, uh, Romy Moreno. Um, She's very into psychedelics. She's into the healing, psychedelic healing. She she has uh, uh what do you call the ones? Uh, I want to call it an escape. No, no retreats. Retreats, yeah. <laughs> escape. I'm such an ex-con. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, retreats. Yes, she has retreats and all that stuff. And we had a great podcast. And here, her and I came in contact. You know, we were discussing what you guys call. I say you guys. What what people call the heroic dosage, right? And I even looked it up, and I remember at the time she said it's supposed to be between four to five grams. And remember, I remember I looked it up, and I, I saw, yes, four to five, but some would say five to seven. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm thinking seven is a fucking plane trip to the moon and back, yeah. in my opinion. Lots of factors, lots of different factors there. Well, and just because I've only done two, I just imagine five more grams added to the two that I did, that, that's a plane trip somewhere. <laughs> you made that seem like a fucking just a wipe of the ass you said that on a low dose for some people you've done 14 grams i mean no that's that's a that is a that is a high, high oh that's a high, high that's a high dose. 14 yeah, yeah. you know okay let me talk about the factors on that so your body weight and your body composition are definitely factors people with higher muscle mass i've, I've worked with a lot of bodybuilders higher muscle mass and uh higher higher tolerance um genetics have to do with this metabolism the way your liver uh, um uh, can um, process and metabolize this. It, those are all factors that you have to take into account. I have a cl- I have this lady that she says I'm a lightweight. I'm a super lightweight. She can drink like a, a glass of wine and she's drunk. Okay. Uh, so you know, with people, you like take that, that consideration. Obviously, I, take, I I'd have this conversation with people. Are you on anything? Are you currently? You take anything? Are, have you ever done like anything, both legally and illegal, or you know, whatever substances? And we'll have this conversation, like a frank conversation, because I need to know what, what you where you're at. Right. At that point. How to gauge them. And- For sure. And so uh, I think the five gram, no, the five gram heroic dose uh, was popularized by um, the great Terrence McKenna. So Google him. He's one of the greatest. He actually, I mean, he's got, he, went to the Amazon with his brother. They, he developed a way to, he brought, you know, mushroom, magic mushrooms back from the Amazon, developed a way to, um, to basically grow them in your house. Okay. Uh, he died, unfortunately, a few years ago. He's one of the brightest minds in history. And he has, um, one of his famous like quotes or sayings is he would say five grams on an empty stomach in the complete silence. And that carried on. That is like, where that came from okay and that's where everybody and it's the same thing with anything else like when you go to an anesthesiologist pre-op they're going to ask you questions a whole bunch of questions mm-hmm. because the anesthesiologist has to gauge yeah how much, how much yeah. am i going to have to put is this guy like a horse or is this guy right you know whatever right so that being said um everybody's different everybody's tolerance is going to be different so, yeah. so now let, let, let's break it down for people. When we mention, regardless of how many grams it is, five, seven, 14, whatever. Three grams. There's some people that w- okay. will do them on a three gram. But what is it that we're, cons- why are we calling this a heroic dose? What is it about it that makes it heroic? It, does this mean that you're going to be the highest ever with no control and this is what you need in order to hopefully detach from that trauma that you're holding on to or, or whatever it is that we're trying to, you know, yeah, resolve even, here. Honestly, don't I don't even like the term heroic dose. I call it more like a therapeutic. Okay, like, like this is. Yeah, I don't think heroic is a good. I don't think heroic is a good title for it. To be honest, with you. Yeah. yeah. So heroic dose. Let's not even like say done that with anymore. it. Like, get rid of that. Stop, saying that, stop saying that, people. Um, if, what do you? Are, are we going to get rid of your trauma or not? That's what it comes down to. So we have to dig kind of deep. We have to drop all these walls and these barriers and. Your, you know, your brain is kind of like an onion. You have to peel off these layers. And if you take too light of a dose, you're not going to peel enough off to get to the core where Interesting. we're going to get to. Right, it makes sense. I get you. These problems. Okay. Okay, we're trying to reprogram 
your 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 basal programming basically like we are reprogramming your mind we're resetting we're, we're returning neuroplasticity to your brain in a positive way now there's you can negatively impact the neuroplasticity of your brain by taking meth that's going to rewire your brain but it's going to do it in a negative way we're trying to do that rewire your brain and return neuroplasticity in a positive way which is you know with a with an intention where this is not just to get high this is not to get high at right. all this is right. not to get high this is to fix let's say you're a police officer and you found a, a child's body in a glove box you're not going to unsee that shit and that's a that's a i've got clients that have had that experience god damn that's crazy Bodies and you and, and you did say and and i want to touch on that since we're here now and that you said and i'm saying this because i want I want people out there of, of all types, all levels, all careers to know, one, that this is this is an option. This helps people with traumatic experiences, regardless of what it is. Yeah. But what I also want them to know is your biggest clients has been officers, police officers. First responders, firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors. So I, I want that to be and, known uh, because- Military. And military, because- Hopefully that can remind people that there's these people are going through a lot Dude, they, and, and they're not they're admitting it. There. Yeah. They're putting their lives on the line daily. Yeah. And they get no thanks. Yeah. And you know how hard it is to talk to somebody about that when they don't know what you're going through? Yeah. It's like you mentioned these veterans, you know, shout out to my brother uh um Damien over there in Orlando. You know, he's a war veteran and you know, he used to tell me like why do you want to talk to these type of things with somebody who has no idea? It's like, wh why am I going to talk to you in Chinese? You don't understand anything. Why am I going to talk to you about how it is to be rich and famous and this and that, and you're here broke, poor, living in a third world country? It, it makes no sense. So a lot of these people, they hold back on these, these whatever that they're, that, that's killing them, that's just mm -hmm. killing them inside. And, and I think this is important that we mention it because you know, these are people with, with prestigious jobs who probably feel like doing this with you can jeopardize the job and it, it, it is kind of breaking the law and and, and um they're doing it secretively and maybe they're not opening up to other friends so it, it it puts a lot of weight on their shoulders and i want people to know man these cops you know that these poor guys are going through such crazy shit right now there's bad people in every career there's bad people in every race there's bad people in every gender by the way there's only two genders <laughs> um but you know the the we need to remember those who are not bad and they're going through a lot and cops got it probably the fucking toughest right now. And these war veterans, if you know this is a true veteran, be conscious of that and treat that person different and understand where you're going with your conversations or why they act the way they act. Yep. And here you are helping them. And, and I think this is fucking amazing. I think this is something that's so dope because that's a passion that's grown of yours. You keep mentioning how this is not a recreational thing. You're not into doing drugs recreational. You're not saying go get high and have fun and look at a fucking wall with a pink elephant. You're doing this because you're trying to help people. And you you literally told me it's not something that you were, you know, uh, uh, boasting about, but you said you're pretty much borderline booked yeah. for almost two years straight every weekend. Yeah. That speaks volumes. That doesn't just speak volumes about how good this is and all that, but it speaks volumes about how many people are out there seeking the help. Yeah. How many people are on their last leg if you want to call it that you know yeah unfortunately in the united states the healthcare system the mental health care system for our vets for our military current military active personnel for our first responders and every sector you know every sector of that you know it's just not there they don't have a lot of options yeah they have you, you, you your partner got shot you got shot at something like that you, you're going to send you to go talk to a psychiatrist and you're going to do that but that's that's not going to get to the core in most cases like these people i have so many friends that like i can see it on their face when something happens like they they're messed up man and unfortunately they don't have a lot of options there's not a birthday that my 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 brother doesn't forget of all his soldiers yeah he remembers all their birthdays he remembers their anniversaries when they died he all of it all of it and it's automatic he always shouts Tattoo them out on your heart man exactly and by the way he's a purple heart so you you can imagine what yeah. he's seen and and i know he's watching this i know for sure he's, he's one of my biggest fans and you know he's my brother he's my best friend you know yeah. and i wonder i wonder if damien you know i'm talking to you you know i wonder if he'd be willing to go down this route yeah um 
I know he's doing great right now. I know that. He's doing amazing. He's got an amazing wife. They, they just had their one-year anniversary uh, yesterday or a day before. Con- congrats. Happy anniversary. Um, but I know he has his demons. Yeah. I, I know he has, you know, those thoughts. I can only imagine. He's at, he's at his best. He's at his most peaceful, most tranquil, most brand new house, brand new. Everything is going awesome. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I, know, I couldn't be happier for him. But I wonder, do, do, do you still have those wake up in the middle of the nights? Do you still, once you wake up, there's no going to sleep because boom, all the, it's all is, 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 is there still triggers mm-hmm. that bring you back to that? And I, I know that, I know the answer. I know the answer. And I wonder if he'd be willing to, to, to approach this because, you know, even I, when you brought me these goodies, I told you I got nervous and I'm not even fucking doing it yet. I, I but it was just like, Oh shit. You know, cause I know this is a journey. This is something I have, I have no trauma. I mean, I've been through a lot of shit, but I, there's nothing that bothers me like that in the back of my mind though. I, I don't. Let me correct that right there. Okay. Everybody has trauma. Yes, you're right. You're okay. right. You're right. It, okay. It perceived your perception of not having trauma could be one thing. Okay. But the way that you've lived your life, the way that we all live our life is it's based on our past experiences. 100%. We don't want to repeat bad things we've done. Okay. We don't want to repeat things that have hurt us. We don't want to go into, you know, a relationship because we got hurt in a relationship before. We don't want to open up our hearts again. We don't want to do this because you know it's going to make us feel a certain way that we've experienced before that everybody's got that trauma inside of them and this is an opportunity this is an option to dig that out and become conscious of it and say you know what i accept that this is what i went through that was probably the best decision i could make at that time in my life if i was going to make the decision again at this point i'm more mature and more i'm a different person i would not repeat my same mistake and I'm, i'm okay with forgiving myself and that's what this journey is all about is is discovering and maturing yourself i'll tell you like a trip is going to add about 10 years to your emotional age you age about 10 to 15 years just by doing a single trip you become a lot more conscious of what you're doing um emotionally and mentally this makes you smarter weed everybody is experienced with weed weed makes you stupider Okay, you drink, you smoke a little weed, or you take an edible, and you're like dumbed down. Uh-huh. It kind of like makes you numb. This does the opposite effect. This makes you more present. It makes you more um, your your senses are heightened. Okay, it's the exact opposite. There's actually a study I can I can send to you also uh, where they injected psilocybin into lab rats, and uh, it increased their their the neurons in their brain by ten percent. Wow. Injecting them pure psilocybin, which is insane. So if, if they have more neurons, especially 10%, 10% more, more, they're going to be smarter. You've got a bigger brain, you're smarter. That's it. Like, we got a bigger brain than birds, and we're smarter than birds. Have the, the, these sessions that you've had with these clients of yours, and again, they, they all vary. Have you, do you have to have multiple with certain it depends, yeah. So does one or two typically do the do the job? Yeah, it, it could be one. Some, some people do good off of just one, and it really just gets to the root of the problem. You know, some people it takes two, three, four. I have one, a friend that she's probably done about ten sessions, and she's doing she feels awesome. better every she's time. Doing awesome, yeah, she's doing really good. Um, going back to what we were talking about earlier during the session and what to expect, uh. Some people will open up a lot and talk. They'll want to talk and they'll feel, and I want everybody to feel comfortable with me because that's the goal. Like right. we're really trying to get at the root of, of what you're trying to fix here and we're trying to fix it. That's the goal here with these sessions. If you feel comfortable and I try to make people feel as comfortable as possible when I'm with them and I'm you know, working with them, and obviously that's by doing a good preparation for the session and then, you know, prior to the session, you know, going through what's going to, what to expect Mm -hmm. and then being there and very present for them during the session. I had a guy, uh, very interesting. This is this guy, um, took his dose and then he went and laid down and I was sitting on a chair, like on the side of his bed. He was just laying on his bed. He had his thing on his eyes. He sat there for like, he laid there for like four hours. Didn't say a damn peep. I was like, Four hours straight. So I'm just, and so right when, so one of the things, a little side note, is when you start the session, I start a timer because that we can see when you're going to peak, when you're going to mm-hmm. start coming down. Right. But also when you're in that state of consciousness, of altered consciousness, 
you lose complete perception of time. Like time does not exist to you. Uh, if you've ever done psychedelics, you'd, you'd know time. You realize that time is a, it's a trap that we live in. Like time is what our consciousness has made. Um, so this guy sits up after four hours and he says, he, like a little tear came out of his eye and he says, that was the greatest experience I've ever had in my life. That's the only thing he wanted to talk, tell me. He didn't even tell you what <laughs> what it was. <laughs> okay, That's so I, I asked him like, so like, how do you want to like, tell yeah, me? Yeah, you want to talk? He, like, he's like, I feel so good, and I know what I need to do now. That's it. It's a very unique experience. Like most people, you had recommended um, after we did lunch. You said, "Hey, Wes, have you ever seen the uh, Netflix series?" Change my mind. How to change your mind. How to change my mind. It's called how. How to change your mind on Netflix. How to change your mind. And I told you, hey, I'm going to watch it right away. Yeah. <clears throat> and I watched the uh, first two episodes that night. And then I watched the next two episodes the, the following day in between training clients. And fucking awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Great. Netflix does a great watch job. That. Great yeah. job with the production. Great job with the, everything. The animation, the explanations. The, they did a phenomenal job. And I thought it was all going to be... Uh, psychedelics or mushrooms or no they, they went around with a little bit of everything and they spoke about mdma and they yeah. spoke about different ways and i forgot the old man's name that was in there a very known known guy no, i'm not talking about paul um it was another one. Oh man he was towards the end i don't know how long it's been since you've yeah. seen it but anyways you know <clears throat> they spoke about one of the one of the main common grounds of these people who have these life-altering highs, okay, is the fact that at some point you you think that you feel this, okay, everything's connected. Mm -hmm. And I remember they did such a phenomenal job on the animation because they showed, it's like they showed you, they made it so realistic. It's like they showed you exactly what the mind would go through when it's on a good, strong trip. And it took you through all the, like, oh, well, first it's colorful, then it's this, then it's some memories, then the blah, blah, blah. And it's it, great animation. And then, boom, it took you to what looked like like the nervous system. Like, just, you know, all the nerves connecting, just yeah. all nerves coming from everywhere. But they did it in such a majestic way where it stopped there. Like, the, like the trip got there, and it was like, oh. And it's like, this was the ultimate feeling. Do you feel connected now to everything, Earth? wind everything everything you're feeling grounded you, you know that you, you're more sensitive like you said to uh energy mm -hmm. um and i thought that was one of the coolest things because i think that the more you can connect with people the more open you are to feeling the more vulnerable i guess you you, you would be because you know people have their guards up when you don't have your guard up you're vulnerable right so if you kept your guard down and you were more receptive It'd be a better world. You would have a healthier life, yeah, man. without a doubt. Different. Everything would be different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 you know that's not to say that fuck. Let's all go get high. No, because again, it's not about some recreational. Let's get high stuff. But you know, I think it's. I love where we're going with this this this. Re, restart of this engine on on the, on the psychedelic the renaissance for for psychedelics right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We you said and I'm, you mentioned it and it was I didn't know this statistic this fact right and I saw it when I saw the movie when I saw the series. We had studies going on. There was a lot of psychedelic. It was approved and there was therapeutic psychedelic studies going on with different patients in different ways and I forgot the schools that they mentioned. It was a big breakthrough and so on and so forth, and everything was awesome. The old man that I'm referring to, he was one of them. And then fuck ass Nixon started the war on drugs. War on drugs. But really, we know that the war on drugs was more of a racial thing. One hundred percent against colored folks. It really was. I mean, and, obviously, and we know. Yeah, we they, talked they, about this. Like uh, Nixon could not get the vote of black Americans, so, but he couldn't make. If you being were, black, if you were dark you colored, yeah, tan colored, brown, whatever. Black, yeah, exactly. You didn't vote for Nixon, which. I've, none of us should have ever voted for Nixon because he's a piece of shit, mm. first off. Secondly, uh, racist piece of shit, sorry. Secondly, um, he, first, so in this case, he couldn't make it illegal to be brown or black. Right. So he's devised, okay, how can I, how can I fuck them all up? Exactly. Like, what do they have? In, oh, they do, they do weed. Okay. They, some of them smoke crack, heroin, all this other stuff. So I'm going to make it illegal to do any of that stuff. 
all the non-white people drugs. Yeah, and even to this day, it's ridiculed that it's been the biggest waste of fucking money, the Bro. war on drugs. is the people doing immense amount of time in prison for shit that they shouldn't for be. A gram of weed, bro. Exactly. On, and then what he did was because that happened, these legit places, the, these these uh, uh, institutions that were doing studies that were taking us to the next level yep. in the 70s. 60s, yep. 60s, 60s, 60s sorry. Yep. They got shut down. Yep. So we went through, that was it. We were we were stuck at that point. Now it's like, okay, then it became hippies are doing it and this and yeah. that. And, and if you weren't somebody self-medicating or- Vietnam War and people would ingest psychedelics and they said they were fighting against the government. They're like, this war is stupid. Why are we doing this? This is just washing funds. This is just whatever reason that the government is, and it was, it, we lost that war, which the United States will never admit that we lost that. Um, and it was a complete waste of time and money. And people that were using psychedelics at the time were totally against it. And that was another reason that they decided we got to get rid of this. And now it's come to a point where big farmers run into the whole fucking thing. Whoever's behind that. We, you know, we, we don't need to go down to a conspiracy rabbit hole, <laughs> but we know that because I know people out there are thinking, all right, well, the war on drugs is just about over. They're, they're letting people out for the stupid yeah, yeah. charges that did too much time on. They're, they're decriminalizing uh, marijuana. You said Oregon is now, uh, everything Oregon. is decriminalized. Yeah. So we, we have small increments, but th 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 these aren't even baby steps. These are literally microscopic fucking ant steps mm -hmm. compared to Big Pharma knows that, again, you just mentioned that, and we're, we're going to put the link at, you know, at the, uh, the bottom of the description on the YouTube some paraplegic just got some type of legs under him to start walking, even though it's a little distorted. He's now walking, He's walking. because of the use of some type of psychedelic treatment was, therapy. He ate magic mushrooms and he was he was paralyzed, ingested a whole bunch of magic mushrooms, and now he's walking like Frankenstein's monster, but he's walking. That's just so you go from a, from from paralyzed to Anything more than paralyzed, that's a net gain. Right, right. And and you know what's funny? What would kind of theoretically support that that theory? And I know you've heard it. I know you also watched uh, Joe Rogan. Um, the ape theory. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And and basically, guys yeah. don't get mad if I'm, if I'm messing it up. But, it, but in short, there's a concept out there that humans became humans from apes, from primates, because at some point primates came across psychedelics, mm -hmm. started... Doing them. Altered their consciousness. Altered their consciousness. Their brains, like you just said, 10% growth in a, in a lab rat from injecting it with psychedelics. Imagine this this primate who's now, you know, Heightened eating. senses. They can right? see better. They can hear better. We, we, we literally, advanced, we, we see them right now during our era right now. We see uh, chimps learning how to use rocks and make make uh, tools. tools yep. And that's, hap that's right now us witnessing it. So imagine back then, and they're getting into these, these psychedelics. Yeah, that's very, very fallible. Yep. Very, very fallible. And it, and it makes you just, these big pharma companies have to be like, we can't let this out. Yeah, We cannot, because it'll crush us and There's people no will find out this. that they don't need, they don't need anything from us. Yeah, Just I mean, go run in a fucking forest and find some shit. Uh, I wish it could be that easy. Doing this is a lot more than just going and popping a whole bunch of mushrooms by yourself. Of course. Yeah, yeah. This has to be done very carefully and with surgical precision. You have to be with somebody that's done a lot of, has a lot of experience with this or get into a clinical trial. Like they do have clinical trials at John Hopkins. I think Stanford's doing stuff right now. There's a lot of universities that are doing clinical trials for different conditions and uh, this type of treatment, which is, that's a great option if you can get into the trial. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Uh, there, there, there has to be people that should not be fucking with this. That's correct. And and let's let's talk to those people or let's, you know, because people are curious and we don't want to misguide them. Yes. What do you suggest? Absolutely not for everyone. Absolutely not for everybody. If you're under 25, I almost say under 30, your brain has high plasticity still. 
you could probably overcome whatever you're doing potentially not in all cases potentially overcome whatever issues you have with other options okay therapy cognitive behavior therapy there's a lot of therapeutic options that you can do if you've exhausted all those options then yeah maybe this is an option uh i don't work with young clients i have worked with young clients i i try not to as much as possible because they're not ready for this experience this experience is it's 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 intense it's it's a sacred experience it's something that some people consider this to be the greatest experience they've ever had in their life which is that's that's a huge statement and then when you're younger than 30 yeah anyways so uh, obviously mental health issues if you have schizophrenia if you have bipolar disorder if you have an immediate family member with any of those uh issues you should absolutely not do this um you should not do this by yourself uh you should not um i mean you should not um mix anything uh this is just not something i i mean doing this recreationally yeah you can have some fun you can have some fun with your friends you can go to a club and pop a very small dose and you're gonna enjoy the music a little bit more festivals stuff like that i mean we're in miami people do that shit right that being said, but on a therapeutic level, on a therapeutic level, which is what, you know, I'm a proponent for, I'm not like into the, you know, pushing. Yeah. Let's legalize this just so people can do recreational. This is a powerful tool. And the first person that gets into a car accident under the influence of this, it's going to set us back. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So don't even go there. Please. That's a good point. We're trying to push this movement forward, not backwards. So, so let's speak about that movement really quick. <clears throat> One, how is it that people can support? It? What is it they can do when there's not really much out there to support, to fund, to... Now, I understand that when you're giving people advice who are facing issues, you know, uh, they've had trauma in their life and, and they, they, they're trying to resolve something, they can't shake it, they've already seeked out certain um, attempts of help or whatever it is. And, but how... Aside from those people who can seek out the colleges that you said or certain institutes, how do you support? I mean, that is is is, is fucked up. I mean, I feel like support is what we're doing right now, talking we're about talking it, about opening it, up about it, conversation, yeah, the public interest and awareness. Right. People don't know what they don't know. It, this is an option, and this is not just a band aid option, like uh, like an SSRI, which you know, antidepressant med uh, medication is a band aid to symptoms. This just helps you feel better for now. And most of them don't work. They have a very, very low success rate. Right. Speaking of success rate, is yours pretty high? You're, with, with, your, with your patients, your clients, is it pretty high? I know you said you had that one friend who's come back already 10 times. You know, I would say that's probably uncommon, but even then. Very uncommon. Is there something wrong with that? What, what What's wrong with coming back? Like, hey, I feel great every time. I feel better every time, but uh, there's still something there. Yeah, so this... Every time you do a trip like this, that's I, I equal that to like a software upgrade to your brain. You know, your phone's always saying update your software because there's a new security update or there's improvements on how your phone's going to work or your laptop is going to work. You always have to update that software. Your brain's the exact same way. If we're not updating the software in our brain, we're going to be on, you know, MS-DOS. <laughs> You know how many people you just lost with that who don't even know what MS DOS is? Windows ninety five. Yeah, you you're about to lose those people too. By Windows the way, 2000. fuck man, talk Windows about seven. Holy shit! Yeah, Which we've come a, a long way. Huh? Um, but no, but that makes sense. So you are upgrading your software, being that your your brain. So do you feel? Let's say okay, I'm not trying to deal with any trauma, but you like you said, we've all have trauma. So I, I go to you. Okay, all right, Mark, I, I'm dropping my nuts. Let's do this, uh, whatever you choose, the dosage, whatever. And we do it. And, of course, I come come out of it great, better, all kind of awesome things. And I like this so much that, you know, I'm like, hey, Mark, uh, it's, it's been a couple of months. I feel great. There's no more trauma to address. Everything is great, but I want to feel better. You just said it's an update to my software. It Can, can I go... Uh, uh, um, limitless with it you know like like the movie can, can can i do another dose that's going to expand my brain a little bit more like we again we refer to the rat that 10 percent increase 
Can, if I do this incrementally and s separate it so many months, weeks, whatever, do you strongly believe that I can continue becoming, I don't want to say smarter, I guess, you know, but whatever, more skills, more creative. Absolutely. Opening up more tools, Absolutely. you know, things of that nature, more sensitive, you know? Yes, you believe that? I know that to be fact. You become a better person every time you do this with the intention to become a better person. And your intention has to be there. Your goals, every, you know, every time you're going to do a session, if you have a focus, you're going to receive like revelations during that experience to help you self-actualize, to become better, to grow as a person. Um, that's kind of like, I guess, the two different types of people that I work with. I'll, I'll work with people with trauma, with depression, with mental health issues, anxiety, stuff like that, like the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other group of people are just people that want to grow themselves. Maybe they don't have any perceived trauma. Like you just, you, right. know, you don't have perceived trauma. I've, okay. I'm doing pretty damn good. I got a great podcast. I got a great life. I have an MMA studio. I'm doing good for myself. Your goal is to go to the next level. Right. And this will 100% take you there. It can 100% take you there. Okay. I would say about at least 95% of the people that I've worked with have had major, major success on whatever they're trying to accomplish. The small percentage uh, that I that don't have success is generally, really when it comes down to it, it was not their true intent to do this. They were pressured by a family member or friend or spouse or peer. To, they, they weren't all in. Yeah, it was like, yeah. yeah, my wife made me do this. Okay, that's not, that. Like, you should have told me that when we sat down the first time because I asked that question, like, why are you doing this? And if, it, if it's not coming out of you, like, you can't change anybody else. I can't make you change. You have to make yourself change. And if you can't even see that you need to change, you're not going to change. That's what it's all about, is recognizing you have room to grow. Right. And then recognizing how you can grow and where you can, you know. Yeah, the the... the I don't know. I don't know what what law it is, but I think Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, f the first way to fixing a, an addiction is admitting that you have an addiction. You're you, powerless. You, you, yeah, you have to legitimately admit you have an addiction. Not I'm just coming to this AA shit because da -da. no 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 no, I have I have a problem. Yep. You got to admit you got a problem. Now we're a step closer to okay. Now how, how can we fix the problem? So I, I I definitely get that. And um, well you know I. I I think it's it's a difficult journey for people to want to take because one, you know, I'm assuming most of these people have never even fucked with drugs, probably. Lots of people have. Maybe it. low yeah, end. Or like they smoke some weed. Weed, yeah, right. Everybody's done weed. I mean, oh, not everybody. A lot of people have done weed. Yeah, regardless, two completely drink a, different drink things. Drink a beer. Yeah. You know, drink a shot of whatever. Or I'm an alcoholic. Whatever people do, alcohol or or weed. Right, like right, right. So, um, you know, it could be a little scary, but you know, on that note though. I imagine, you know, the way you, you get your clients is is a, a reference, a referral yeah, I'm, I'm of some sort. I'm not sort. Like looking for the, right. like anybody. Like, people come to me, they are referred from people that have fixed their lives, and they see, what, like, I can't Dude, believe you, you, this, you Yeah, you got to do this, yeah. And, and, like, I can't believe my brother, he's, he's that's a how Mark. That's, that's how my cousin talked about yeah. you. That's exactly how he spoke about you. He's like, dude, you got to check, man. This guy has fucking helped a lot of people. I know a bunch of people at the gym that he helped, and... He's fucking great. And I'm like, wait, 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 what? He does what? You know, and that's obviously that we're here now. Um, but you're booked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's difficult. You know, you know, I was wondering, I asked you off camera earlier, you know, what what's what's the next step? I, I feel like you're you're this you're this if you if there was a college program to become a specialist in psychedelics. I told you that I would say you at, at least are, um, you have a master's knocking on a doctorals. And the only reason I'm saying you're not, you don't have a doctorals yet is because I look at like uh, uh, Paul, yeah. you know, as, as having a doctoral. That's, that, that's, uh, that's a yeah. doctorals, you know? Yeah. But you're so informative. You know so much. And I, and I even asked you, hey, careful when we do the podcast. I'm not saying dumb it down, but if you, if you go super fucking technical with those long ass words on, on every, you know, bit of what's inside of these mushrooms and you're going to lose some people because, you know, it's, it's very, uh, there's big vernacular there. Um, but you're so smart with this dude. And it's like, man, I would love to see you with a fucking clinic. We know that can't happen. Uh, you know, I would, I would love to see you 
not doing any kind of work except this all week like fuck doing anything else and and i i truly hope you get there you know i, I do um i don't know if that's what you aspire to do yeah i mean at the point that i'm at and how much this has helped me help so many people around me this is this has helped so many people man like you know veterans coming back from being in you know war deployed in afghanistan and stuff like that i've worked with uh, you know i, I kind of mentioned that uh i don't really work a lot with youth but i did work i have worked with some youth in certain situations i, I work with this uh this girl she had depression young girl like 17 uh, major depression she was on antidepressants her hair was falling out um she had a trip and during her trip she turned to her mom and she said um, I just want you to know, like next week when I was going to be like the weekend with my dad, I was going to, I was planning on killing myself. I was com going to commit suicide. Oh my gosh. She admitted this to she her mom. To her mom right there. And she just started Dur crying during the, during the session. Wow. And then she said, Oh my God, that's so heart wrenching. Oh, I mean, oh. beautiful young girl. She had the whole world ahead of her. And unfortunately <sighs> the way society is now with social media, there's so much pressure to be perfect yeah and yeah this young generation messes has it. with young women yeah of course it messes with women in general it messes with men it messes with everybody's heads mm -hmm. anyways she just broke down and cried and said you know what at this point like i don't even i don't want to do that i, I realized that that's so stupid i want i want to do something else with my life and from that day from obviously she had been off of antidepressant for a couple of weeks prior to this because your receptor sites need to be cleared out for this to be feel the feel, full experience and she has been off of antidepressants. Her hair is growing back. She's she. I met up with her a couple couple months ago, and she said to me, "My friends all want to be around me again because I'm not that negative wow. life drainer that I was." And that's just insane. Like when when you have that experience with somebody, and and that person could have died, and right. her, both of her parents would be having major trauma at this right, point of course and that's there's no way to come back from losing your daughter mm -hmm. to suicide mm -hmm. and if this has the potential to save somebody like that exactly exactly why, why aren't more people trying to suggest it or yeah. at least this needs to be this needs to be this is going to be the future of healthcare, mental health care in the united states this is the future if i know i'm gonna have a lot of people friends um <clears throat> associates i don't know who would it be but uh, you know I, I definitely know several veterans i know many cops and i know a shitload of firefighters um but it's not just about them it's just that you know obviously those are first responders yeah. and you know i, I actually know people the, the, the people that i know the most are a bunch of mma fighters and mma fighters always got some fucked up shit they going on stuff, yep. yeah yeah <laughs> you know a lot of them been through through things and whatnot but if and when somebody reaches out to me and sends me that DM and say, hey, Wes, I, you know, I, I know you said that he's booked for like two years pretty much, but is there any way I, mean, I can? At this point, I mean, no, I have been <clears throat> booked for the last, you know, couple of years at this point. I mean, I've got some openings within the next couple of months, so. Okay, so if somebody reaches out to me, guys, you're not going to reach out to him directly. That That's just not going to happen. Obviously, you, you got to respect and understand where that comes from. Uh, this is something that he, he does obviously looked down upon by the federal government because it's not you know it hasn't been legalized just yet but it's something that society needs and, and all you're doing is helping people uh, again with the story you just mentioned you pretty much just helped a young girl from committing suicide which would have just had a domino effect on on the family and it just would have been a horrendous horrendous yeah. uh situation for everybody to go through and nothing was solved or even attempted so th this this is great and I, I want people to, to spread it you know i really want people to spread the word i, I hope people watch this podcast and, and they send this to a friend, they recommend this to somebody who they know might have some traumatic issues and is, is looking to seek out some help. If anything, some consultation at least. Can we at least talk about Educate it? What yourself. do you what do you suggest? Yeah. You know, things of that nature. So um people out there watching and all that, make sure you know you can reach out to me. Go ahead, please. Oh yeah. On that note, uh as far as education, if you um are not a reader, which a lot of people just want to watch something. Right. Uh, definitely watch the uh, Netflix series How to Change Your Mind. Yes, That's based on a book. Uh, and if you're a reader, get the book. The book is 
Book Always is, better, pretty much. The, the book is way more, um, way more detailed. Uh -huh. This is like the cliff note version of the book. <clears throat> uh, the book was written by Michael Pollan. He's a very uh, famous food and he's, he does a lot of plants and food books. And uh, anyways, super smart, awesome author. You know, he's a best-selling author. Uh, and the book is insane. Uh, I had heard about the book because I saw in the news that Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank uh, had invested a whole bunch of money into psychedelics. I heard something yeah, about that because he had read this book, and I, I was like, Kevin O'Leary, like Mister Mister yeah, Wonderful, Wonderful, that yeah. invest in nobody unless he knows right. This is He's gonna make me money. Gonna make me money. Yeah, he was the, he was the toughest one, right? Always the toughest one, and so he read this book and very very informative book. It goes through a lot of those studies back in the sixties. Uh, talks about you know curing alcoholism after a single dose wow. at high percentages over six like over 50 60 percent off of a single dose second dose over 70 75 percent cure <clears throat> you never drink alcohol again you have no need or desire to ever drink again in your life and we're talking about alcoholics this is an addiction like you cannot get off of this right right and this is something that can cure that and then that all got brushed under the rug with the war on drugs crazy how that one cocksucker did all this yeah I mean, only only for him to be a piece of shit who was doing illegal oh, things on his own and we got him out and yeah i mean unfortunately we didn't reverse his legislation right right well but i hope that that comes soon what i can say brother is again we're here now yep. you know um without a doubt you're coming back <laughs> okay without a doubt you're coming back and we're going to continue talking and educating people and we'll go deeper down other rabbit holes. But for now, I just want to tell you, man, I, I truly appreciate the fuck out of somebody like you who, who does what he does and, and follows this, this fashion, not for monetary reasons, not for clout, not for uh, uh, recreational purposes. You're really doing it to help people. You, you, you are witnessing firsthand how these people are coming from the depths of hell from the from the lowest of the lows and they're bouncing back in a way more positive fashion and, you, and you're changing their lives you're helping change their yeah. lives Ed. and we don't want to put this like it's the no, no, power of god they're helping you know? themselves yes through self-actualization through a therapy that unlocks basically the best performance enhancing yeah part of your your, your brain is your performance enhancing they're, they're they're believing in your guidance Mm -hmm. And they're trusting the information that you're telling them by by convincing them to to take this psychedelic to help them overcome what they're overcoming, and and that's big. That's that speaks volumes, you know. Um, and I think it's awesome, dude. And I feel blessed to have, to have met you. No, and uh, again, I, a, a big shout out to my cousin Ruben for putting us together. Um, guys, <clears throat> if you are genuinely, seriously, sincerely curious or, or would like to reach out to mark reach out to me first and and we'll go from there um like you like you heard it's not for recreation he's trying to help people who are dealing with issues the many different issues that are out there whatever whichever one it is or if you know somebody reach out to them send them this clip send them this 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 podcast send them the information my information it, it's worth it there's there's there has to be thousands uh, if not more people out there who could use this, who probably want to use it, or who are at least just hurt and, and, and no one knows because they haven't dared speak out enough. Because again, these first responders, the amount of shit that they see, is, oh, it's, it's just much. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Every time I hear something fucked up about what cops go through, I see a cop out, out, out and about, I don't mean while driving, I mean um, walking or in the gym, and I always give them a head knob, and I always say, you know, what's up, you know, what's yeah. up, officers? Because I know they're just going through some shit, yeah. and, and they got a chip on their shoulder, and they probably think everybody's looking at them. You know, we need to be more... Uh, considerate towards what yeah. people are going through so um i think this is going to help a lot of people uh, i think you're already doing an amazing job and we're going to continue it going we're going to do our part and continue with these podcasts so mark man i, I appreciate yeah, you my bro, brother thank you so much um guys stay tuned make sure you keep following and support the podcast mark do you have a instagram that you want people to follow or you want a family I'm man tip you don't want to go there? no yeah I'm fuck not. that shit <laughs> That's just the, the <laughs> devil. I mean, I never really got into it, so. Well, yeah. you don't need it. You're, you're doing a better thing by helping people. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. Guys, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. I thank Mark so much for, for joining us and blessing the podcast. Don't forget to go to blacksheepapparel.shop to get your gear. 
Follow me on Instagram, 305 Black Sheep. Might be Black Sheep 305. No, it's 305 Black Sheep. And uh, much love to you guys. Enjoy your weekend. See you on the next one. Peace.